now, spluttered Sid. The tea is poisoned, exclaimed Eric. The old man looked mightily disappointed and peered at the tea tray. What about the biscuits? I don't know, but I wouldn't touch them either if I were you. Shame, I'm famished. Why are those two old dears trying to kill us? I reckon it's because they found them hiding here. They're Nazis. The old man's eyes widened in horror. Nazis? In Bogner Regis? Yes, how do you know? I saw one of them give Heil Hitler salute to a picture of Adolf Hitler. Well, that is a pretty strong sign of being a Nazi, I'll give you that. Gertrude sat up in the pram, and the boy helped get her dry by rubbing her with a towel. As he did so, the gorilla searched his hair for nits and pulled a few out to eat. I never knew I had nits, remarked the boy. Well, don't knock it. They're a tasty treat for Gertrude, replied Sid. Then his gaze was drawn to something outside the window. Hello, what's this? he muttered to himself. Sid got out of bed. A little unsteady on his tin legs at first, he walked over to the window. What's what? asked the boy. Come and look out at sea. There's a light. Can you see it? By this time, Eric had joined Sid at the window. He followed where the old man was pointing. Outside, it was growing dark. The sea was raging in the storm. Huge waves were rolling and breaking and a mist was swirling. So it was hard to make out much detail. But there was definitely a light flashing on and off at regular intervals out at sea. Is it a ship? asked Eric. It looks too low in the water to be a ship. A submarine? Maybe. But what could a British submarine be doing off the coast of Bognor Regis? What if it isn't a British submarine, said the boy? What if it's a Nazi U-boat? Just behind him, Eric heard the clinking of crockery. Gertrude had climbed out of the pram, picked up the teapot and was about to drink it. No, cried the boy. In what felt like slow motion, Eric leapt through the air and snatched the teapot out of the gorilla's hand. The hot tea was sprayed around the room. It scorched the carpet. The heat of the tea couldn't do that alone. It was clearly there was something else in there that was deadly. He's burning the carpet, said the boy, crouching down to inspect the damage. That was poison, all right, exclaimed Sid. Thank goodness Gertrude didn't have a drop. Let's get it all out of here now, said the boy. Open the window. Sid did so. And Eric took everything left on the tray, the milk, the sugar and the biscuits, and dropped them out. The gorilla looked most disgruntled. She made a loud moaning noise and was say, spoil sport. Sorry, old girl, said Sid. Leaning out of the window, Eric noticed something. At a window along from theirs, another light was flashing. It must be the twins making contact with whoever was out there. Look, the twins are flashing a light back. Sid put his head out of the window and observed the pattern of the flashes. It's Morse code, he said. Dot dash, dot dash and all that. Exactly. They're spelling out words to each other in the flashes of light. Do you know what they're saying? Grab me that postcard and pencil on the desk. There were a few dog-eared bits of the view tower stationery on the writing desk. Eric hurriedly handed them to the old man. I learned Morse code during the First World War. That was 25 years ago now. Let's hope I can still remember it. Instantly, Sid began jotting down all the dots and dashes. A short flash of light was a dot, a long one a dash. Oh no, it's all in German, huffed Sid. And my German is very rusty. I don't know much beyond Heil Hitler, said Eric. The boy turned back to Gertrude, who was standing just behind them at the, week, at, the, at the window. I don't think Gertrude can speak German either, he said, stroking the gorilla behind her big furry ears, just where she liked it. Is there anything you can make out, Uncle Sid? T-O-T-E-N. Totem? What's that mean? I heard the German soldiers shout it when they were charging towards our trench. It means kill. Kill who? said the boy. Us? Wait. Sid made out some more notes. C H U R C H I L L. Together they exclaimed, Churchill! Totem Churchill, says Sid. Kill Churchill. Somehow, Sid, Eric, and Gertrude had stumbled across a deadly Nazi plot at a guest house in Bognor Regis. This is big, said Sid, having to sit back down to take it all in. This is bigger than big. This is the biggest. Kill our Prime Minister. Without Churchill, the Nazis would be sure to win this blasted war. 
What can we do? asked the boy. We need to get out of here pronto. We need to find a telephone. We need to call 10 Downing Street and warn them. Call the police, call the army, call Bessie, call anyone we can. Will they believe us? They better believe us or the world will be in an even bigger trouble than it already is. Look, exclaimed the boy, more flashes. Dot, dot, dash, dot. As Eric spoke, Sid scribbled down the letters to form words. After a while, they had a few. The pair pondered the list for a while. Even Gertrude leaned in to take a look before becoming scrattled, distracted by a Scott cockroach crawling across the floor. She chased it under the bed. It would make a tasty snack, with those biscuits having been thrown out of the window. Fluff, said the boy. What's fluff? Well, them sounds like ten, so maybe fluff is river. Interesting, mused Sid. Very interesting. Bomb? Well, that's pretty obvious what that means. What about Zeke? asked the boy. Zeke, hi, oh, Nazis chant it when they give their salute. It means victory. So Zeke means victory, yes. The boy took a deep breath. This was thrilling and terrifying all at once. So what we have is kill Churchill, River Thames, a bomb and victory. Just then, the door swung open. The twins were standing in the doorway brandishing machine guns. So, you didn't drink the tea we prepared for you. What a pity, purred Bertha. It would have been such a quick and easy death for you. But no, you had to choose the hard way, added Helene. They pointed their guns straight at Sid and Eric. Prepare to die, said Bertha. 